Hey guys, Finley Turbo here. Today we're going to go over some of the HX50, 52, and 55 frame. Now there are four turbine wheels common to the HX50 frame, covering 50, 52, or 55. Um, we will see there are a multitude of piston ring designs. Some are two in one slot, two separate, single, two separate. Different part number chargers will have different piston ring location. Just because your turbine is a 8470 like this does not guarantee this is the piston ring combination. So turbine wheels are not necessarily interchangeable unless the center section is set for whatever piston ring design the turbine came with and whatever piston ring the turbine you want to swap to comes with. Like from this one, the only two, I'd have to double check, it looks like the 8470 and the 7786 are interchangeable. So back to the beginning, starting on the left, we have our 8470. These come on a lot of D12s. Um, usually the D12 start off as a 677016. They're rated about 425 horsepower. Here we have the 8672. This would be a turbine wheel out of the Pro 52. So a 7172 would be the spec for that unit. This here is the 7786. This one is most common off M11 turbochargers. Those are spec 65, 77, usually 18 or 19 cm. They are not a T4i, they are not a T4, they are not a T6. They are a special Cummins design flange. So that housing is useless. The 65 millimeter comp wheel has no MWE. This was one offs off of an M11, no MWE. So generally they have low value. Anyone that has one of these, I usually just say, throw it away. The 8680. Now these most commonly, well these two, but most commonly the right comes on the ISX that runs the HX55. The ISX HX55 is a 71 with a 5 inch cover, 5 inch inlet, and a S400 discharge. It is the largest frame HX55. They're rather expensive and they come with a monarch style exhaust flange let me see if i can find one here is one of the monarch flange ones it's a big x this was a special adapter we made so i thought i could single one didn't work out that well also here is a five inch cover with a super mwe which is kind of a, almost a super mwe which is all set design this would have been a 71 mil off a isx hx55 so there's a couple different flanges on the exhaust housings. Exhaust housing sizes are numerous. The most common is T4i. This one we have slotted to be T4. This one is a 16 cm T4i gated. It did come with a 7286 turbine. Um, this was a pretty special unit. Um, that uh, 16 is a fairly common size. The gateds are not super common. The 8470 that comes off the D12s, they come with the 16 CM, the ones that are rated at 425 horsepower. That is a very common size, the 16 CM exhaust housing. Um, you can also get off of a DD15, a 6770-11 CM. Highly do not suggest. I've blown up Plenty of the 11 CMs. Just don't do it. Highly, highly, highly suggest not to. The only ones that seem to survive are sub three liter engine applications. We put one on a N54 and they did really good. Another interesting thing is the part number 7286, I got this out of, is shorter than the other turbine wheels. So this one is definitely not interchangeable with most. I'll have to try to locate the part number for that unit. I do not recall, it's been a long time since I pulled that one out. I generally don't use these. I usually use one of these three. These are just extremely hard to come by and expensive. Um, 
It does spool very well. These two are the best spooling, and these two are the slowest to spool. They pretty much rated from 400 to 500 horsepower in OEM applications. The compressor covers, depending on which part number you get, most of, most of them have a four inch inlet with a second gen discharge. These do work on, these are the same as the HX35 discharge. I kind of call them second gen discharge, discharges. So a elbow for an HX35 will clip right onto that. They do feature a V-band assembly to the CHRA, which I really like. This one features an O-ring, not all of them do. So we can swap this bad boy on. Throw the clamp on. Same thing with the turbine housing. The turbine is also V-band. Now turbine sizes, there's a very wide array. Smallest I've seen is a 10 cm. I owned one, sold it, didn't have any interest in it after blowing up multiple 11s. Uh, 11 cm non-gated T4i, 11 cm gated T4i exists. I owned one of those, also sold it. 13 cm gated and non-gated exist. 16 cm gated and non-gated exist. Um, 18, 19, the largest that I've seen is the 24 Monarch flange, which would be on the ISX um, HX55 version. Compressor sizes, and we got this one that, we, that I blew up. We have a range from 61.5 is the smallest. I have never seen one in person. The smallest I've seen in person is a 63. Common ones are 65 and 67. Those are the most common by far. The 71s really only exist in the five inch cover and the 60, the five inch inlet. There is the five inch inlet on the DD1567. So the two five inches that are common, the 71 off the ISX and then the 67 off the DD15. Um, other than that, most are four inch. Uh, there are exceptions to every rule because whole set, whole set loves to be extremely confusing. Now we could talk about the thrusts. Here we've got a new mallet kit. Here is a thrust that we smoked. The turbines drive the thrusts really hard. If you over, if you drive them too hard with too much drive pressure, they tend to wear in the back of the thrust pad. The thrusts are still very robust. Just they can get extremely hot. This one's cracked, as you can see. Here is a new thrust from Mellet. I really like the Mellet kits. Got the back of the thrust with the thrust collar. Other side. That's how it would ride, obviously missing the journals, etc. And it, the bearing housings do have dowel pins for the thrust. They are a fairly robust thrust. Um, yeah, so HX50, 55s are a decent platform in my opinion. They are not the ultimate platform, but... So the HX55, 5250s are a fairly robust platform as you can see. We have the OEM comp wheels. They're all seven plus seven. We have aftermarket performance ones like this seven plus seven, this one's a 65. It's a pretty decent little wheel. We had one of the custom 67s I had made. Um, the only issue, I, only two issues I see with the 52s, 55s, and 50s, don't overspeed them. And try not to have too much drive because you will wear out the backs of the thrusts. They are great for budget friendly builds. If you are smart enough and have enough time to buy two or three turbos and put, put them together because generally when you take something off of a turbocharger off of a 8, 10, 12 liter engine and swap it onto a 5 liter engine, 6 liter engine, generally right off the bat they don't have the best characteristics. That's why almost all of mine were like two or three chargers put together. Do I suggest them? Yeah, they have a great place for I really like them for the Cummins application. I think they would do really good. We are doing a 6.7 with a 
We're gonna do a 67, 77, and a 16 cm gated housing, and we're gonna pair that next to HX60, which, as you can see, we're gonna put the HX60 next to a HX50. It's massive. HX60 is by far one of my favorite platforms. Very expensive chargers, however. Um, we are going to be doing a 6780 set of compounds, or an 82, or an 85. I have this beautiful 85 millimeter wheel and this 80 millimeter wheel. I mean, the rotating mass on the 60s is just insane. The 60s are more robust than a S400. Thrust pads, thrust collars, journals, Everything is tougher on an HX60. And the 3.6 flows massive amounts of exhaust. Highly suggest HX60. Anyway, so back to the HX50, 52, 55. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments.